Hello guys, welcome back. All right, so in this video now, I want to show us how to take an appropriate smell measurement. So now, um, the reason I have to start from afresh or from scratch is to enable some of us whom are lacking some knowledge on measurement and also throw more light for some of us whom already know it but need more clarifications. So before you take a measurement of your customer, you have to ask him what he wants. So once he indicates he wants it to be fitted, free, or ask you to do whatever you know that is good so you now proceed accordingly now the area of measurement which you have seen on the board so i will also um, show you guys how to measure them so the first area to measure would be the chest so you have to pass your tape round the chest this way right then you tighten the tape first from the tape, from the firm grip of the tape you now extend your uh, measure tape by extra three inches from here for ease allowance so once you lock it up this way, right, then you add extra three inches for here. So that's 40. The tight tape is 37. Then add extra three, that's 40, right? Or you can add two and a half, depending. Then for a fitted measurement, then you take it down to the tummy and make sure that the tape is moving freely up to the waist and the hip area. So his chest is 40 for a fitted measurement. So if you want to have it to be free or a bit big, can now add, add, add extra one and a half or one inch extra. So this is how to take a perfect chest measurement. The tape should be able to move from the chest to the tummy and to the waist and hip area as well. So after that, the next to do is the shoulder. So you must stay at the back this way. So you take the shoulder of your of your customer from the back this way. Then once you take the tape um got to your shoulder point, wherever you stop is where you have to start again to take for your Sleeve length. Now, bear in mind that you can either take shoulder like this, or you take half back from the center of the back uh, body. You take it halfway. Then, whatever answer you get here, you have to count it by two. So, the answer, the thing here is either you take full shoulder this way, or you take what they call half back. Then you have to multiply the answer by two to get the total length here. But to be in a safer side, it's advisable to take from the center panel here and then get to the shoulder point. Then I have it to be at 8.5. That's times two is 17. Means that the shoulder is 17, right? Then after that, once you have taken whatever measurement of your shoulder, you start from there. You put the tape this way, push the tape head to start from there to take your sleeve. For the sleeve can be either short sleeve, which is at the muscle area, Tricotta sleeve somewhere here and then long sleeve somewhere here as well. So you measure in those areas. So after that, the next to do now is your round sleeves. So you place your tape underneath the arm this way. Measure it round this way. Don't make it to be too tight or too big. It should be at least one inch off from the body, right? And then you take the reading that way. Your client might be asked to call his hands to know the extent of the muscle protrusion. To give you that pity that you'll be craving for. So after that, the next to do is your round sleeve here yeah, for the elbow. You also ask him as well to call his hands. The tape will be able to move freely and then lap at the perfect position for your round sleeve um, um, elbow measurement. After this now, the next is your fist. You measure your fist as well. Now bear in mind that if you're measuring short sleeve, you are going to only measure one round sleeve, which is here. If you're measuring three quarters, if you're making three quarters sleeve for a customer, that the sleeve that stops somewhere here, you have to measure the round sleeve to be three as well, the bicep area, the elbow, and where the sleeve is stopping. So this is, these are the areas you must measure when measuring sleeve length and round sleeve as well. After this, the next is your neckline. So the neckline will be measured this way, round the neck. Then your finger, one finger will be inside. You measure the neckline in this form, right? So his neckline is 16 and a half or 17. It wants to be a bit free. So that's for the neckline measurement. After that, the next is your top length. From this area, you measure to the chest, to the, to the, to the belly and down to the zip area. That's the top length. You take this position. So some persons can want to have a longer top length or a shorter top length. Then be in mind that there is a difference between shirt length and top length. 
top length is for normal senator outfits, while shirt length is the one I am putting on. So the shirt lengths are always shorter than the normal senator top length. Usually, it should be five inches after the waistline for your shirt length. Then top length does not have any limit. It can be even full length to the ankle area, right? So just know that. Then after this, you measure the waistline. Now on the waistline, please don't measure on the belt. Measure above the belt. So you measure this way, above the belt, this way. Then tighten your tape to make sure it laps firmly on your customer's waistline. So after this, the next to do now is your hip measurement. So the hip measurement, your customer must spread his legs apart this way. Make sure he takes a balanced position. You measure the hip. Now, when taking the hip measurement, please ask him to remove his phones, pocket, or um, wallets, or um, hanky, whatever be in the pocket, pocket, you should remove it because those um, stuffs will increase the actual measurement that you should have. So the pocket should be flat, both the front and back. Nothing should be inside the pocket while you measure the hip circumference as well. Don't forget that his hips must, his legs must be spread apart in a balanced position. The reason for this is to get the actual circumference that will enable him to move his legs very well without having a restriction of movement on the um, hip area. Now, most of the times, even, even though we want to have a fence trouser, it should not restrict our movements because if it does, we will not be able to climb bike walk well, jump gutter, or even move our body. It will looking, it will make us look like we are wearing a female trouser. So you should bear in mind that even though you are looking for fitted nature, you should also give you ease for movement and freedom. So now you also measure right around the hip region this way. So the tape as well will be big enough to glide all freely to this area. So his hips is um, 43. Now the trick I use is that for all adults, the difference from their waist and hip should be at least seven inches and above, right? So seven inches, eight inches, ten inches, ten inches and above. That's the difference from the waist to the hip should be at least seven to seven inches and above, right? So after that, you also measure the lap measurement. So now don't stand erect to take the lap measurement. You are having the tape to go diagonally which is strong so you must make sure to squat down this way to take a perfect lap measurement that will lap on the body firmly this way so after this the next to do is your knee so your knee measurement as well should follow suit you should also come in this form right so once you come in this form you also glide the tape around the knee measurement the tape should not be too far or too close to the body right so after that the next is the ankle your ankle must come from the heel of the shoe this way, or in this diagonal form, to the front panel this way. So whatever the tape stops here, you come to ankle measurement. After this, you take the length of the trouser with the customer who face upright. Don't allow him to face down. Then use your hand to pinpoint where the length should be. Now, if you should ask me to suggest, the length should be on the bone of the ankle here. So for the one, this is a um, trouser length. So having said this now, so this is how to take an adequate male measurement, right? So in due course, I will also throw more, more highlights or more insights on other areas of measurement, like the abada for the adults, the danshiki for the adults, the measurement for the kids, and then also the other sewing, the other patterns of clothing, right? So thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to comment, ask your questions, and Give me a, a suggestion or a comment if you like this video or if you think there's something I need to be doing more for you guys to learn. Thanks for watching guys. See you in the next video. Bye bye for now.